Okay, because Maggie is lacking a little self-esteem, we want to build it up and we're going to teach her to do so by teaching her different tricks and commands. And Grandma is going to go through, well, I'm saying this is if the grandchildren are going to watch this, but her guardian is going to go to YouTube and look for a new trick or command to teach her each week for the next eight weeks to really help build up her confidence by mastering the new skills. One of the great ones we can do is practicing the recall. So when I ask the dog to recall, before I even call the dog, I hold my hand flat, just slightly cupped, with one treat in it, and I usually hold it between my fingers here so I can kind of twist it around and I'm holding it, uh, but with a flat hand. Can you demonstrate a 90 degree angle again? There we go. So you're gonna hold like, there we go. Now raise it up, now lower it, and say come. Come. So we're gonna tickle underneath her chin, kind of like this, so I'll show you right here. Come. Come. So what we want to do is we want to say the word come loud so the dog can hear it. And we don't have to scream, but we want to say it loudly. And then, but before we do it, we hold our hand out like with a 90 degree angle. Can you show again? Before we call the dog, we want our arm in that angle. We don't want the dog to look at us and then we start changing. We want to be ready before we call the dog. Then as soon as the dog comes to us, um, I'm going to show over here. Um, I'm going to raise over the head to get the dog to come. 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 So I raise my hand over the dog's head to put it into a sit. Now eventually the dog's just going to come and start sitting in front of us. We don't have to raise our hand over their head. But if the dog does not come, then I'm going to have you, here let me distract, so go ahead and hold that out and you're going to make the kissing sound and lower it and raise it. There you go. So now let her have it. Perfect. And scratch on the chin. Now. The reason I raise, again, my hand is just to put him into a sit. But the lower your hand goes, the more appealing it is for the dog. So if we say come and the dog doesn't come, then I'm going to hold my hand like this and I'm going to say, I'm going to lower it and that will make it more enticing to the dog. Now before I lower it, as soon as the dog, so there we go. So I'm going to sit. All right. So I've got my hand here. I say come. The dog doesn't come. Then I go. And then it looks at me. And then I start lowering my hand. That Lowering your hand will cause the dog to come to you. As soon as it comes to you, again, we raise it, put it in a sit, then let her lick it off her hand and scratch it on the chin and say, come. Now, we want to start this off in the living room so that there is, uh, you know, about 10 feet apart in a, in a square or pentagon or whatever shape it is. And then basically, grandma is going to be in charge the first time and she's going to say, uh, what's the first name? Kobe. Kobe. And Kobe is going to then, before he calls the dog, is going to be holding a treat like that. And he's going to say, come. Nothing else. Just the word come loud enough for the dog to hear it. Now, if the dog doesn't come, then Kobe is going to make the kissing sound. And as soon as the dog looks at him, he's going to start lowering his hand until the dog comes to him. Now, if the dog comes to anybody else, cross your arms and then kind of, and you're going to tilt up, look up. So that's what you do if the dog comes to you and you didn't get, and you're not the one that called the dog. That's your way of saying, I have nothing for you. At this point, then Colby would make the kissing sound again. As soon as the dog looks, he lowers his hand and keep lowering it until you get to the ground if you need to. As soon as the dog sees that, it's probably, she's going to probably run over. As soon as she does, we raise it over her head, put her in a sit, lower it, let her lick it off her hand, and the same t second that the treat touches her lips, we're going to say the word come. Mm -hmm. Now, after we've done this in the living room, for about, you know, to the point where she's coming and sitting in front of us without, you know, just right away, then we want to transition to the backyard. And we want to start out, maybe if you have a deck, on the deck first, with everybody about 10 feet apart, and we do it, you know, about five or six times as the dog is giving the same reaction, coming over immediately, sitting in front of whoever called her. Then what we do is we go into the yard and we repeat at the same distance. And when the dog gives us the same reaction, then after, after about five or six treats, then everybody takes one step backwards and we make the square bigger. And we keep on repeating that, and that until eventually we're at the borders of the yard. Now this way, the dog gets practice. Anytime somebody calls me, and we're not saying the dog's name, we're saying come. If I hear come and I respond to that person, I get a treat. That way later on when you're walking her, if she doesn't want to respond because there's a squirrel and you say come, we've got all that practice, all that muscle memory is going to kick in and that will override her hopefully going after the squirrel. Now it depends on how close she is to the squirrel and how engaged she is, but having the recall is a very powerful tool to have in your arsenal and that's going to go a long ways. So you're going to really count on your grandkids to help you with this because you can't do it by yourself mm -hmm. and it's going to be great for them because it's going to teach them, uh, teach her that the only way she can get attention from the grandchildren is come and sit in front of them instead of pawing at them or jumping up on them or licking them. Right, Maggie? Sit.